we're going to take a look at redoing this car and making it a more competitive car. So I think we can basically take what we have here and improve upon it so that we can shave off seconds on the final time. So the engine has not been tuned. We're going to tune the engine. We're going to remove all the burrs around the wheels, around the plastic parts. We're going to oil up all the parts. We're going to make sure that this thing is race worthy because she'd really like to race this in a box stock race and see how it does. So there's no guarantees that it'll win a box stock race, but we're going to use our knowledge and know-how to try to make this into a better racer. So let's do it. The first thing I noticed after just disassembling the car is that nothing has been oiled, nothing has been greased. So this is basically just a box stock kit that's been put together using basically just a screwdriver. So what we're going to do is we're going to oil and grease up the various gears, the little pinions and cogs, and we're going to make sure everything is well lubricated. So next we're going to replace the engine with a tuned engine. It's not tuned per se as in tuned class engine. It's basically a motor that's been broken in. So this purple pinion, we could actually replace this with a black one, with a carbon-based one, and it will still um, be considered box stock because the purple pinions are no longer allowed in various Tamiya races. So let's just make sure that we have some good grease here on the pinion. I'm going to use a paintbrush to basically swab all of the pinions, all the pinion teeth. And I'm going to drop this right in place. Just like so. We'll replace the motor cover. The motor shield. Let's take a look at the other side. Make sure that these parts are well lubricated as well. Place this cover. We're going to clean the wheels now of all of these burrs. It looks like my girlfriend never put the palm keylets in in place. I think you're supposed to put that in those little rings, and then you have these metal. Uh, keylets that you put inside the ring. So she never did that. So she must have skipped that part. I think that really contributed to a great amount of loss in power on this particular model. Okay, so first big addition was the motor. Next we're going to add the keylets. So what we need to do is use two of these and two of these. Do it. Early on, I suggested washers on our car, but in this case, let's try to get the model working first before we add any of that cool stuff. Let's tighten the engine down. Let's take a look at the back. Let's remove the burrs from these wheels. So that's a that's a little bit of a power loss right there. So 
you wanna make sure that your wheels are smooth. You can't leave these bumps on there. The bumps will definitely prevent you from attaining your fastest times. Think about a car, a big car, a car that you drive. What if you had bumps in the tires? Don't you think that that would somehow affect your times? So we're going to make our tires as smooth and flat as possible. Now over time, these tires are just going to, to wear. And eventually you need to replace these tires. But that's not going to happen for a while. So try to make your tires as flat as possible at the outset. Then you'll do good. The wheels also, try to remove all the excess burrs along the wheels too because when these wheels spin, they're gonna spin at high speed. And you want the rotation to be as smooth and as fast as possible. So you wanna remove those burrs. Now what's gonna be the difference in time? If you were to truly measure this, you might find a negligible difference, but you don't want all these little things to add up because they do add up and they do slow down your car. Okay, so this is a nice round wheel now now that we've removed the three burrs that are there. We can now place the tire on. So the tire looks like it's a reversible tire, so I'm gonna just place this back on. And these aren't super hard tires. They're kind of, they're kind of softish. Let's try this with the other side too. Remove the burrs one at a time. Take your time when you're removing burrs. It's better to cut a little inward in the tire rather than leave anything out sticking out. So you don't want a nipple sticking out where the burrs are. You want it to be flat, ideally, or a little concave into the tire. And again, the tires will wear over time and they will flatten out over time. So if you race this enough, eventually, you'll get a more consistent tire. Well, it all depends also on the wear and tear of the tires and how things like your track, how stable the axles are, that determines a lot on how the tires wear. It's mostly the track though, if you have a very rough track, you're going to get uneven wear on your tires, sometimes harsh wear on your tires. So I'm going to remove these axles. I'm going to test the axles with the wheel, um, the, the shaft tester, because I want to make sure that these are straight. I've discovered that more than half of these shafts out of a box stock kit end up being not straight. Oh, that's pretty good. Yes, very nice. Let's try the other one. Oh, that's, this one's nice too. So, very good. We bought from a good dealer, AAA Hobbies. Has um, quality stuff. Um, you buy from someone online, you never know what you're going to get. You might get something old that's been sitting on a shelf for a while. It's always best to get fresh stock from, from your local hobby store. So let's put, let's put this tire back in place on the wheel. Great. Let's tap one of these in. Yes, I'm using a wheel pusher to tap it in. Let's remove all the burrs from these tires as well. These are the front tires.
Okay, let's put the wheels back on. So I'm not gonna push all the way because I want the wheel pusher to actually do most of the job. Okay. So here's the wheel pusher. You want to make sure that you get the wheels on as straight as possible. That way the tires are aligned and the wheels are aligned. You want to keep waggling this until there's very little waggle. And there's going to be a natural stopping point. This is good, right here. Feels good. Yes. And then the other side. And that ensures that the axle and the wheel are perpendicular, perfectly perpendicular to one another. Remember to keep waggling, waggle, waggle. And there's a natural stopping point, so don't over tighten. A little more waggle than I'd like, but it's good. It's good for now. So, we can choose to place the batteries back in. Follow plus top, minus the side. Great. Now let's try to fix this so that these turn better. Right now, there's no spin in the rollers. You really need some spin in the rollers. The rollers are a large part of how this thing is going to traverse the track smoothly. So you want to make sure that the rollers are smooth, smoothly rotated. It looks like my battery cover, battery catch, just like popped off very easily. So let me see if I can snap it back in place. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. There's the snap. Oop. Oh, what happened here? It doesn't want to stay on for some reason. So this goes in the front and it doesn't want to stay on. And I don't know why. Huh. Now it's on. Well, we'll see if it stays on. So, let's take a look at what's going on here. She decided to put these things as washers underneath the rollers, and that's why they weren't spinning freely. So the wheels should be fixed now, so that's good. So now we need to fix these rollers. So let's make sure that the burrs are removed. Just like the tires and the wheels, you want to make sure that you get every little bit off of the sides, the edges of these rollers, because you want to make sure everything is smooth. You can even go over things with a file in a very gentle manner. Here I have a nail file. That's good for this purpose. It's a very fine uh, sanding, fine grit, so we get a nice smooth surface once we're done. Don't be afraid to use everyday tools that you might have around your house for this. So there we go. That's one. Let's try the other one. So I think for a lot of a lot of um, people who are starting out with Mini 4 wheel drive, they get intimidated by the instructions because they're printed like in a very small way. The text is small. It's hard to read in some cases. And if you just, if you've never built one of these before, or even if you built like two or three of them, they can still be pretty intimidating because like we're unfamiliar with, we're, in, we're possibly intimidated by things we're unfamiliar with. 
So we try our best to follow the instructions. And the instructions don't always lead us to a proper conclusion. So only through experience can we actually develop enough uh, knowledge, experience to, to build one of these properly. So over time, you learn certain things that are similar about each car. And pretty soon, you can build one of these cars without even looking at the instructions. You might just need to look at the instructions, refer to them if there's an unknown part, like, for example, the Lord Spirit, which is the new car that has the new um, side wings. That's a new part, and you might need to refer to the instructions to set that up properly. But in general, all of these cars are basically the same. The chassis may, might be different, but the knowledge to install the wheels, to install the rollers, to install the engine, well, the engines are usually a little different in each chassis, but you can pretty much figure out what's going on and you can assemble the battery um, connectors onto the motor pretty easily. You can just kind of figure it out. But a lot of people without the experience, they can't figure it out. That's okay. That's just how it is. So let's put a little oil on these rollers on the inside, what I like to do is oil them up. I don't really like to use grease here. I use oil. So we've got this handy dandy Tamiya oil pen. So there we go. And I'll oil up the revolving screw. And insert the revolving screw in here, then I will attach it to this Super 2 chassis. Now, I noticed something else. Okay, I'm going to fix the chassis also because there are burrs in the end here. And these actually drive me nuts when I see them because they shouldn't be here. <laughs> It's not going to make anything more aerodynamic, it's just going to make everything look nicer. So I'm just going to make this look nicer. Uh, if you're building this, these things in a serious manner, you're going to care about every little detail like this. If you're kind of just building this for fun, then it might not be so important. But yeah, I'll just take this. Ten, 10 turns, it's a little loose, waggly. We'll continue the turns. One, two, three, four, still spins freely. Tiny bit of waggle, a couple more turns. One, and it feels like it's there's some resistance. So there we go. Okay, so we could choose to leave it like this. We can unturn it one, half maybe. Spins about the same. So we're going to oil this. Let's retighten it in half. We're going to oil this. First, we're going to use parts cleaner, and then um, we'll spray it off using air. Let's lubricate the other rollers. Oh little faux, faux pas here that I just did. Um, see if you can get a surface that doesn't attract dust and hair. Because when you oil your stuff, when you oil your parts, and then you place them on 
a surface that attracts dust. The dust can actually cause a lot of harm. So the dust is going to prevent these things like the rollers from spinning as freely as they should. So try if you can to work on a surface that does not attract dust. So you might have like a rubber pad, you might have some sort of anti-static mat that you normally use. So whatever you like to work on is fine, even on a cloth mat like this, but just be mindful of the fact that you don't want to just drop your pieces on, on the mat freely so that they attract dust. So it still spins nicely. Very little waggle. Very good. You can see like there's a little bit of space right here between the base and the roller itself. There we go. And here. And that's good because you want the roller spinning freely. Now let's try the other side. Same deal. Let's place this up here this time. That way we don't attract any any dust from the from the recently lubricated part. So you see how this oil pen works. It it basically continuously releases oil and it's like a little paintbrush. So that's why I use for the grease, I use a little thin paintbrush for this. And these can be purchased very cheaply through Amazon, these paintbrushes. You can get a whole set of them for relatively cheap. So possibly a good technique to use when you're tightening this is just make sure this thing's still spinning freely while you're tightening. And then when you get to a point where there's some resistance in the screw, in the revolving screw, that should be where you should stop. Don't proceed any further than that. So it's a little tight. There we go. Okay, a little bit of waggle. And we'll also do the last roller. Lubricate inside, lubricate the revolving screw, remember to replace your oil pen and your grease tube uh, if they're running out. It's pretty difficult to figure out how much oil is left in the oil pen without placing it right here on your on your hand just to see if anything is being released from the pen. But just looking at it is very difficult to figure out if it's still a usable pen or not. Okay, excellent. So, a little bit of waggle there. And here, good. Okay, let's put the cover back on. Let's put the latch back on, the body catch. Let's go test it now. Okay, so this car was rebuilt. It's got smoother tires. The rollers now spin freely. There is a broken in motor in here that's, that's installed. Um, I replaced, or actually installed, the little palms that were supposed to be inside here. Um, there weren't any for whatever reason. And I just cleaned up various parts all around this car and we made this into, oh, and I lubricated everything too. So I made this into a race-worthy car. So I shaved off about 10 seconds worth of time on a 10 lap uh, circuit. It's the Japan Cup circuit. 27.39 seconds, I believe it was, for the pre-fixed um, pre 
model and then after all of my uh, upgrades and improvements it's now running at 17.39 seconds for the 10 laps so yeah a difference of 10 seconds so pretty darn cool so yeah this could be brought to any box stock race and it'll be fairly competitive so yeah so maybe i'll do more videos just like this one where i'll just take cars and i'll just try to fix them and make them better so yeah <laughs> we'll see so yeah if you like this video everybody please slam the like button subscribe to my channel and you'll see more videos just like this one i promise you now i'm not an expert but i am a super enthusiast and i have a lot of knowledge to impart to all of you so yeah i hope that you'll join me for future videos just like this see everybody bye